why on earth would a successful lawyer leave a high-profile job she loved, throwing away a career she worked so hard to achieve? Emily Pastor did just that, despite criticism from a variety of people, and setting herself up to have to start all over years later with a new profession, one that seemed less prestigious and even made her feel embarrassed to admit in the beginning. If you want to find out how the clash of motherhood and career created a perfect storm that pushed Emily to upend her entire life, then stay tuned for this compelling story from Working Mom Warrior. I'm Diane Mocha. Welcome to Working Mom Warrior, where mothers of all different backgrounds share the ups and downs and hacks of juggling career and kids. I want to take you inside the life and the psyche of a mom who endured an emotional journey to find her own unique version of work-life balance. It's something I understand after spending four long years confronting my own trials and tribulations after my longtime gig as a television reporter came to an end. I didn't want to move my family even to keep the career I loved, so I ended up working seven part-time jobs until finally transitioning back to crafting video stories, now as a YouTube host, so I can share with you the inside hopes and fears of other working moms, like Emily. After I followed her around and interviewed Emily for hour upon hour, I realized her insights would inspire other working moms, but I got bogged down running in a million directions to pay the bills and raise the kids, so it took longer than expected to finally produce this video exposing Emily's secrets, the first of many profiles I'm sharing with common themes we all face. I hope her story of transformation reminds you that success is not measured by our bank account or by the grades of our kids or by the achievements of our mate or the size of our clothes or the cleanliness of our house, but by the feelings in our heart. I use every minute that the kids are in school and my sitter hours and I think it's easiest to put myself at the bottom of the list. Emily Pastor is one of those moms who seems to have it all together. She's got the well-behaved kids, the work from home career, the successful husband, the beautiful house, and she's also got a deep dark secret. There were these people in my life who were disappointed in me and that was really hard. Emily is like so many of us who look like we have it all on the outside, but we're hiding something on the inside. Women were so hard on ourselves. Many of us don't share our secret because we'll feel judged for not being good enough as a parent, a professional, a spouse, or even as a woman. But Emily is brave enough to invite us into her life. I've given myself, you know, permission to uh, do a lot of things that I might not have otherwise. Emily is a foodie who spends her days writing recipes and promoting her books and other projects. She works from home so she can pick up her daughter and son from school, take them to piano and swim lessons, and get back in time to make dinner. As the creator of a popular family food blog, you'd think everything eaten by her children is healthy and homemade. I've got some leftover rice. Emily isn't ashamed to admit she feeds her kids food from a box, while she and her husband enjoy tastier and healthier fare after the children are in bed. So we're having a roasted root vegetable hash. Emily thinks moms should not feel guilty about serving their kids packaged food that they like, even though she sold books full of healthy recipes and established Chicago's original food swap, which celebrates homemade delicacies, a money-saving barter system, and a sense of community. But Emily's daily dinner shortcut for her kids is not her big secret. She's got something darker lurking beyond the kitchen. So embarrassed and you're gonna be horrified Emily's got one of those rooms, the kind you don't let anyone see. I had to beg her to allow me to capture it on camera. She only said yes because she was moving to a new house and knew her private disaster would soon be gone. This is our basement where we just shove everything. <laughs> all, the, uh, all the toys the kids have outgrown, the furniture we don't use anymore. It's paralysis, like I could deal with it you know, if I just put my mind to it, but it's, I find it so overwhelming. Though Emily is mortified to reveal her clutter catastrophe, she realizes it's a relief to come clean. But even that mound of chaos in Emily's basement is not the private pain that tormented her for years. 
not the secret she hid, even from herself, after she finally earned a high-profile position as a prosecutor. I really liked my job. You know, it was a flexible job, but it was still interesting work. And that's hard to come by. My dad especially, he was really invested in his high-achieving daughter who'd, you know, gone to the University of Michigan Law School, who graduated in the top 10% of her class, who had a clerkship with a federal judge. He used to, you know, he was bragging about me to his friends. But her priorities began to shift with her second child. My husband was working for a law firm. He worked crazy hours and he traveled all the time. I had a three-year-old and a baby. I could imagine, and I'd seen it, what it's like to add a second career to that picture. And it, what it is, is it's chaos. <laughs> and it's someone else raising your kids. It's a nanny, a full-time, you know, it's your nanny who's with your kids all the time. That was not what I wanted for my family. I wanted to be a really hands-on parent. And that meant leaving my job. That was a, so that was a really hard decision and it was a sacrifice that I made for our family. But that was what we agreed to together. So even though I put so much time and effort into my legal career, at that point I walked away and I was okay with it at that time. Emily's career ambitions took a back seat to motherhood and she was fully committed to the decision. Though the days with the little ones were exhausting and devoid of mental stimulation, it was admitting she was a stay-at-home mom that really got under her skin. We'd get invited to an alumni event for our law school and I wouldn't want to go. I would be like, I don't want to go. People are going to say, what do you do? And I'm going to tell them I stay at home. Or my judge that I clerked for had a clerk's reunion. I said, I don't want to go. I can't walk into that room and tell people I don't work. I'd obviously made that choice and I was comfortable enough to make it, but not comfortable enough to own it to the world. Those feelings were eating away at Emily and she eventually took a job teaching a law class so she could work part time and have flexibility in her schedule for the kids. Careers are long, especially now. And you can have a second act or a third act. But if you need that time, take that time because it's not coming again. As Emily's kids got older, she became more open to new options and realized her dream work-life balance was staring her in the face. I've always loved food. It was always a passion of mine. She left the part-time professor gig and the law for good and cooked up a plan to start a food blog, which grew into her idea to create Chicago's first food swap. Everyone thought she had it all, except Emily. I didn't feel like legitimate, if, if you understand, in the culinary world. I hadn't gone to culinary school. Um, I just sort of announced that I was, you know, a, a food writer and a blogger. And, you know, I thought, part of me thought, why should anyone believe me? The death of her dad pushed Emily over the edge. I actually um, started therapy uh, after my dad passed, about four years ago now. And I thought that was really for grief, and it was a lot for grief, but it also, as it turned out, one of the things I had to work through was this career change and going from that identity of the lawyer with the, you know, fancy resume and the sort of st official stamp to this second career as a writer and a food person. Um, and that, that transition was really, really difficult for me. I, um, so much of my identity, as you say, was wrapped up in being that lawyer. That has been a big internal journey that I've gone on and it wasn't easy. It was hard. I've healed and yeah, I'm ready to I'm ready to let that part go. But I needed it. It was interesting. I really needed it. I needed that I needed to work through what that meant for me. Emily's loss of her identity was the secret causing her shame. And once that hidden truth was out in the open, she could work on resolving the internal battle and embracing her new ambitions, which led to a publishing deal. It was the course of working on my blog and growing it and getting more followers and gaining some confidence. And then when I did in fact get a book deal, that was the moment where I, it was like, that was sort of legitimizing and made me feel like, okay, this, I, 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 this new career is valid and this is what I do and I don't have to be ashamed of it. I can be proud of it. And that, so that it was, I guess I did need that sort of external validation of, of getting that book contract. Emily's food career continues to heat up. With a second book, a loyal blog following, her canning classes and culinary events. These are all stuff I've made. 
I'm very proud of my, all my jams and jellies and pickles. Emily still struggles, like we all do, to walk that tightrope between work versus family time. But now she knows if she's starting to lose that balance before she takes a fall. If I hadn't had the, the traumatic event of my dad's loss, I don't know that I would have thought I deserved to go to therapy, if that makes sense. It was the grief that got me in the door. That was like an okay reason to go to therapy. But it was only through the course of that that I realized that I had this other conflict that I really needed to work out. And now looking back on it, I'm like, that was as important and you know as, as the grieving. But I didn't know it going in. Working moms can learn a lot from Emily about what stressors to pay attention to. So what are the takeaways from her story? Well, if you're worried about giving your kids packaged food, relax. And remember, even foodies feed their kids what they want within reason rather than having mealtime battles. And if you avoid having friends or family over because you're embarrassed your home is a mess, let down your guard like Emily did. And remember, your true friends are there to see you and not your house. Finally, if you feel disappointed in yourself because you just can't handle it all, whether it's frustration, emptiness, or fatigue, know that we've all been there, and that's the time to take those feelings seriously and reach out for help. It doesn't have to be a huge life trauma. It can be any kind of struggle. You don't, you deserve it, you know, you deserve it. It's, worth, it's worthwhile. It was for Emily Pastor, our first working mom warrior. I'm Diane Mocha, and I'm looking for the next heroic mom who can help others by sharing her own dirty little secret. I hope the story you just watched and my other videos remind you we all feel frustrated at times, but it will get better. I believe working moms who accept their strengths and weaknesses are better able to prosper day in and day out. And I want to help by sharing more strategies from other working moms in my next video to give you ideas and inspiration to keep conquering your challenges. So subscribe to my Working Mom Warrior channel and click on the next video to boost your confidence as you relate to the successes and the failures of the Working Mom Warriors who share their secrets so we can all benefit.